Juan Cole from informedcomment.com, the University of Michigan, author of the book Engaging the Muslim World. We'll be right back. You can sign up for the Liberty Radio Network email updates at updates.lrn.fm and join us on Facebook at facebook.lrn.fm. Ground Zero. So this is where the first guy got AIDS. Peter, this is the site of the 9-11 terrorist attacks. Oh, so Saddam Hussein did this? No. The Iraqi army? No. Some guys from Iraq? No. That one lady who visited Iraq that one time? No, Peter, Iraq had nothing to do with this. It was a bunch of Saudi Arabians, Lebanese, and Egyptians financed by a Saudi Arabian guy living in Afghanistan and sheltered by Pakistanis. So you're saying we need to invade Iran? <laughs> All right, so welcome back to the show. It's Anti-War Radio. I'm Scott Horton. I'm talking with Juan Cole. And Juan, the reason I'm asking you all these stupid questions about uh, the amount of Islam or the kind of Islam or whatever that these uh, hijackers supposedly believed in, uh, well, you can pretty much guess. It's because uh, the Republicans at the time, nine years ago, uh, asserted that there was no motive for the attack other than how good we are which means that there's something about the belief system of the people who attacked us that makes them hate good things. Whatever is good and true and beautiful and honest, Islam is determined to destroy it. So we must resist them and defend ourselves. And even though Bush said, no, we're not at war with Islam, just some of them, they still, the, the basic premise still was Islam was the motive of the attack, twisted version or otherwise. Is that true? No, Islam was not the motive of the attack. Uh, otherwise, uh, m you know, more than 19 people would uh, would be involved. Um, you know, I saw Chris uh, Matthews. He made me so mad yesterday on MSNBC. I turned it to it for just a second because all those stories about the the mosque, uh, the 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 Quran burning had maybe been called off, and the, maybe the New York Islamic Center had been moved and whatever. And there's a truther standing in the background with a sign about controlled demolition and whatever. And Matthews goes off on a tangent about the truthers. And he says, this is what he says. I swear to you, I wrote it down. In fact, here, let me turn to my page so I get my quote right. It's just right here. He said, you know, these truthers, you know how they are. They're always just trying to blame 9-11 on Washington, D.C. or whoever instead of, quote, the Islamic people. My Lord. So that's who did it. 1.3 billion Muslims attacked us on 9-11. Why haven't we hydrogen bombed them all off of the face of the earth then? I mean, yeah, what are we waiting well, for? Well, as I said, if 1.5 billion people were uh, actually gunning for us, uh, we'd know about it. Yeah, it seems this, like this, it, right? There'd be fires everywhere. Yeah, I mean, this, this kind of generalization from this small fringe uh, weird terrorist group, uh, Al-Qaeda, to Islam in general, it's just baffling to me. First of all, there are all kinds of Muslims. You know, uh, the the people who who were caught up in, in Al Qaeda were uh, from what is usually called the Salafi uh, branch of Islam, which is a, a a modernist reform, and it has a fundamentalist form. It has a more liberal form, uh, but it's not something that most Muslims agree with. Uh, most Muslims are traditionalists. They're Sufis. They're uh, they're Shiites in I Iran, uh, and so it, it, the thing already starts as a sectarian uh, minor thing, and then the specific ideas that the Al Qaeda folks had of taking, you know, being vigilantes of taking affairs into your own hands, of planning out a terrorist attack, uh, the the specific grievances they had uh, against the United States, which came out. Uh, of their experiences with it during the Afghanistan war were, uh, you know, peculiar to them. So to take this small group of, of Salafis and Wahhabis uh, who had been in this maelstrom of superpower rivalry, uh, had been involved in fighting uh, and, and so forth, and, and generalize them to, you know, your ordinary everyday Muslim housewife in Cairo, is it, just bizarre. And we would never do this uh, inside our own culture. So... You know, David Koresh was obviously a whack job, and uh, uh, you know was was 
was diddling the, the young girls in his compound and uh, all kinds of unsavory things were, were going on. Well, I don't so know, we 17 never, years later, I'm still waiting for a shred of evidence of that, but go ahead. Uh, well, uh, uh, we would never say in any case that D David Koresh was, you know, a typical Christian, or that why did the Christians stockpile weapons at Waco? Uh, we were able to make a distinction between a cult and, uh, and the general religion. And, uh, we, we, or, you know, Timothy McVeigh and Terry Nichols were in the Christian identity movement. And we don't, we don't talk about Oklahoma City being blown up by Christians. Uh, so it, it's just, uh, when we come to a different culture, all of a sudden we want to generalize to a billion and a half people. Right. Well, it's because most of them are on the other side of salt water from here, which makes them not even real. Well, that, I mean, the fact is that we probably have about 6 million Muslims in the United States, uh, which is substantially more than we have Quakers, Unitarians, all kinds of other groups that are perfectly recognizable. Uh, I think it's, it's time for the United States to recognize that it's a multicultural society. Uh, American Muslims are a very important part of our society. There are, a lot of them are physicians. Uh, they're, they're keeping our children uh, 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 healthy. Uh, you know, uh, I, there was a story in the press that in a small town in Wisconsin, the local Muslim community just, uh, petitioned the city council to, to build a mosque. And they got all this pushback and this rage and this uh, uh, trash talk from the community. And they were, they were taken aback because they were part of the community. They had been interacting with people. And one of the men who was leading this uh, effort to get a mosque was, was a physician. And they said, people came to me, they, they, they were treated by me, I had my hands on them, you know, we made them well. Uh, they never brought up anything about uh, my religion, but all of a sudden when he wants to worship uh, in, in, a, in a dedicated building for the purpose, uh, then all of this uh, uh, hatred came out, and uh, I think he was shaken by it. Yeah, you know, I saw Ron Paul on TV just completely dismiss the accusations about Islam by saying... In the medical profession, I've known so many Muslims, I just forget that. I, I absolutely reject any of this. I'm, I'm done discussing that. Let's talk about foreign policy some more. I mean, just forget about that. You know, give me a break. And this is the thing that really gets me. Like you say, there's six million Muslims in this country. And I wonder, and see, here's the thing. It's been all this time, and we had Bush kind of kept a lid on this by saying we're not on a crusade. Sorry I said that. We're not at a war against Islam. Just you know, the countries we want to invade and conquer and keep forever and whatever. Uh, but nine years later, Juan, the, the Juan Cole, Michael Scheuer, Eric Margulies, Scott Horton, Robert Pape narrative about how we got into this mess, i.e. history began before 9-11, and this was a tactic in a war that we were in, uh, uh, you know, one, one shot in a war, and that it was about, this, that, and the other specific thing on earth, we haven't won that fight about what this is even about yet. And the idea that it was at least a twisted form of Islam, a, a fringe form of Islam as the motive, that still reigns. That is still the dominant narrative in this society. So no wonder everybody's scared of Muslims. Even though they weren't on 910, they never thought we had to have a permanent clash of civilization with a, uh, civilizations with a billion and a half people on 910, but as uh, I read somebody pointing out the other day. Uh, but now, all of a sudden, hey, if they attacked us for uh, for being good because of their Islam, then no wonder we have to fear them. The, yeah, well, Scott, uh, the, the, reason, the people are right to be afraid yeah, based on their false premise, Juan. That's what I'm saying. The reason for which we're losing this argument uh, is, is because the Republican National Committee sat down in a room in August of 2006 and decided that scaring people with terrorists wasn't working anymore and they had to get more specific. And they rolled out Islamic terrorism and Islamo-fascism as, you know, their, uh, their, their, their campaign point for the 2006 midterms. And you saw Bush suddenly start using this rhetoric, which he had never had before, and it was generalized. And then you saw it in the presidential uh, election and, and the Republican primaries, Giuliani, Huckabee, all of these people were using this discourse. Uh, and, uh, uh, and, and now it's, it's become, you know, Rick Lazio thinks that he can get to be governor of New York by attacking Islam. So in the old days, the Republicans used to uh, use communism for this purpose. 
And in the 19th century, the, the know-nothings used to use Catholicism for this purpose. But, you know, if, if, if you're representing a narrow group of people, and the you know, Republicans are basically about supporting uh, the super wealthy, that's, that's the ultimate goal. Um, and that's not going to make them popular with most people. They've got to give the other people something. And, and they've decided that, well, we'll support the super wealthy in our legislation, but in our, in our, in our talks and uh, in our discourse, uh, we'll scare the ordinary people with Islam. And that way we can get into power and we can keep this country uh, uh, from being egalitarian. We can keep throwing the, the, the lion's share of all the new wealth created in the country to, to the top 1%. And uh, it, it's, it's a shell game, and the American people shouldn't fall for it. Muslims in the United States have been, you know, the FBI has counted the hairs on the back of their heads. They can't hardly find anybody who is a threat to security. There are far more Christians who are dangerous in the United States than there are Muslims. Well, look, there hadn't been a real terrorist prosecution since Musawi, because there ain't no al-Qaeda in America. There only ever were a couple hundred al-Qaeda in the world, and the CIA and the Air Force killed 90% of them in 2001. And so this whole thing is a war against a shadow anyway. Uh, you know, the best that they can do is try to create more al-Qaeda by invading more countries, which yeah, seems yeah, to be, you know, Obama's like plan, too. the Taliban too. in Afghanistan who were just pushed to nationalists. Right. Uh, they call them Al Qaeda. Well, wait. Now I'm sorry because we're way out of time, but I just I got to say this for my own part, and I'll let you get the last word. And as I'm not afraid of Muslims, I love Muslims just as much as everybody else. I'm glad they're my friends and my neighbors, and live in my town back home in Austin, here in Los Angeles, and all over the place. And I refuse to be demagogue into fearing and hating the weak. And if it's not just obvious on its face how stupid that is, that we ought to all have all our hatred diverted toward the voiceless instead of the, peep, the top 1% you just named who just finished ripping off $12 trillion from us and killing a million people, then uh, I forgot how I started that sentence. But forget that noise, man. That's not what it's about. You know, If you're going to demagogue, demagogue up. And, and leave the weak alone. I can't imagine what it's like to be a Muslim in this country right now and fearing that, like, geez, could we actually get to a point where there's a pogrom here, where, where something gets completely out of hand? And I say, I love you. So for what that's worth. Well, well Scott, it's a wonderful sentiment. I, I associate myself with your sentiments in this regard. And I think it's worth noting for all of our uh, listeners that today is uh, the – uh, the festival of the breaking of the month-long Ramadan fast, and uh, let's w uh, wish all of our uh, Muslim uh, uh, listeners uh, a happy Eid, and uh, wish a happy Eid to all of uh, our American listeners in solidarity with the Muslims. Right on. You're a good man, Juan Cole. Thank you, sir. Uh, it's my pleasure, Scott. Thanks for having me on. Everybody, that's Juan Cole. The website is juancole.com for the informed comment. And the book is Engaging. The Muslim World, 